so a key element of the model will be the matching market where um, labor services are traded. Um, so here, because um, we have a dynamic model, um, you will have relationships that are created at any point in time. And of course, you will have also relationships that separate at any point in time. Um, so let's see how the matching market works once you have these dynamics. So now we'll have both to look at job creation and you know, if you want job destruction. Um, so let's start by uh, introducing the notation. Um, so earlier I said that the size of the labor force was L. Uh, that was a typo. I said, we'll denote the size of the labor force by H. H is the size of the labor force, so it's the number of workers who would like to work. Um, and the, you know, the advantage of using H that it's the same notation as what we use when we had our two market models. I think it's, it's preferable. Um, okay, then, so H will be the size of the labor force. <coughs> this will be a parameter, so it's going to be uh, fixed over time. LT, that's going to be employment. So the number of workers um, who have a job at uh, time t. Then we'll have uh, vt. <coughs> so vt are going to be the vacancies posted by households. Then we're going to have uh, <coughs> mt. That's going to be the number of new matches uh, at any, you know, at time t. And of course, that's going to be given by the matching function. Um, we'll have trading probability. So f of t will be the job, uh, the job finding rate at time t. Then you would have Q of T that's going to be the recruiting rate at time T. Uh, or, and we'll have a new parameter that we call lambda, uh, which is going to be strictly positive. Um, lambda is going to be the rate at which uh, job separations occur. So I think that's going to cover uh, that's going to cover uh, all the new notations here. Yes. Um, so uh, something I should explain, I guess. Uh, so here we have a unique market, uh, you know, exactly as in the basic model, and that's a market for labor services. And if you want, there are like two ways you could think about that market. One is that you could have you could think that what's traded is one unit of service. And uh, you know, so the, the matching function will give the number of services that are traded at any point in time. And the long-term relationship will be between a household. Uh, and if you want the seller, a seller of one service. Uh, so you could think of it that way. Uh, and in, in a case like this, each household would have many workers, and then each worker would sell many services to different other households. Uh, or you could have a focus that's going to be more on workers, and that's the focus that we'll take here, and because um, I want to have a better mapping between what's going on in our model with one market and the kind of vacancy data we have and unemployment data we have. So here, instead of thinking that it's units of services that are traded. Um, we are going to assume that it's work, you know, workers enter relationship with households. So what we're going to say is that a household has a bunch of workers, H, that want to get a job. Um, and when they work this house, these workers, they, they work for another household. And they, you know, they're in a relationship with that household, all their services are uh, bought by that one household. So essentially, workers now, they become uh, full-time employees of other households. So you can think that here, it's uh, a butler economy, where 
all workers are butlers for other households. So they work full time. So households are going to post vacancy to recruit butlers. Once they find a butler, the butler stay with them for a while. Um, and the butler doesn't work for the household. He works solely for that household and delivers a range of services for the households. And then this butler household relationship, they separate at red lambda. Uh, and then once you become, you know, once you're, se you're, you're separated from your household, you become an unemployed butler and then you're looking for a new job and so on and so forth. Um, so that's how we're going to, uh, to model it. So butlers do produce services. The services are consumed by the household. Um, but we assume that each worker is, uh, works solely for one household. And one household will, in fact, hire a bunch of butlers to provide them a bunch of services. Um, you know, so you can think that there are some butlers that are, are going to do uh, that, you know, are going to be more into cooking. Some butlers are going to provide more landscaping services. Some butlers are going to be nannies. Some butlers are going to be tutors for the kids. You know, think of it that way. Um, so households want a range of services and they hire butlers to uh, provide these services. Um, and the household butler relationship is going to last for a while until there is a separation. And then when there is a separation, the household will post a new vacancy to uh, replace the butlers that left and get a, get a new butler. Um, so, uh, the framing of the matching market, uh, you can think of it as a, oops, you can think of the matching market as a market for butlers. Uh, so butlers produce services, consumed by households. And in fact, we said that there was, uh, we assumed a linear production function. So each butler, in fact, produces A, which is what we had called labor productivity, A services per unit time. Butlers are in long term employment relationship with households. So we can have, you know, a simple. Uh, we can draw a simple diagram to explain exactly like how the market works. So <clears throat> on the one side, so on the one side you have a bunch of households. Uh, and all these households, they are going to uh, supply um, H butlers in all to the market. Then uh, on the other hand, you have the same households that are going to consume. So I guess uh, so we'll have LT employed butlers. Uh, and so at any point in time, you have lambda time LT. Uh, Butlers become unemployed. So 
So here, I guess, um, it's true that we have um, H butlers, but LT are employed. So we have, uh, I guess, let's see, we should say H butlers, but what's key is that, so that's in total, you have H butler, but in fact, you have H minus LT unemployed Uh, H minus LT unemployed butlers, uh, and of course LT employed butlers. Uh, and then you know, out of this, you you're going to have uh, FT that the job finding rate times H minus LT. Butlers find a job at any point in time. And that's going to be given, uh, that's going to be given by the matching function, the number of So we'll have to look into the matching function to figure out exactly how you know how these uh, how these butlers who find a job are going to become employed. Uh, so let's let's look at this now. So do you remember that in the uh, in the basic model we used the CS matching function and we did that because we wanted a matching function that guaranteed that the job finding probability and the recruiting probability were always between zero and one, so there were probabilities. Um, here, because we have a dynamic model, the matching function is going to give the number of matches that are realized per unit time. And that number can be, it doesn't have to be between zero and one, you know, as the number of matches that are done per unit time and, uh, you know, the rate at which you find a job and the rate at which jobs are separated, that, that just has to be a positive number, but can be very large because the rate is going to describe the, num you know, the number of matches that are done for each in infinitesimal amount of time. Um, so, uh, so here we don't need to have this constraint that, the matching function is always less, you know, than the two uh, inputs that the matching function, the number of matches is less than the number of vacancies and less than the number of unemployed. That's not the case once you're in a dynamic continuous time model. So that's a big advantage of using continuous time over discrete time is that the, the rates can be anywhere between zero and infinity. Um, you know, because at the end, these rates, you think of them as just the arrival rate of a Poisson process. And a Poisson process can have any rate that's positive, even if it's very large. Nevertheless, the probabilities uh, will always be, you know, the proper probabilities will always be between zero and one. Um, so the advantage is we don't need to use CS matching function. What we can do instead is use a Cobb Douglas. And um, Cobb Douglas is much easier to use than CS, the probability, you know, the Probabilities are easier to find, the elasticities are easier to find. Um, it's just much more analytically tractable. So um, an advantage of moving to, to, to the dynamic continuous time context is that now we can move to, uh, to the Cobb Douglas uh, matching function. So So we have a Cobb Douglas matching function. The two arguments will be uh, VT, so that's the number of vacancies posted by households who are trying to recruit butlers, you know, to provide services. And uh, of course, H, that's the size of the labor force, minus LT, that's the number of workers who are employed. <clears throat> and H minus LT, 
that's going to be the number of unemployed workers. And this and so what we have is the number of matches per unit time. So it's going to be given by this Cobb Douglas expression. So it's empty. It's going to be equal to uh, mu. So we'll see mu is just the efficacy of matching. Vt one minus eta. H minus LT times eta. So that's going to be our Cobb Douglas expression for the matching function. And so here mu, that's what we call matching efficacy. So it's going to govern like it's positive, of course. It's going to govern how well uh, the matching occurs on the matching market. Eta, that's what we call the matching elasticity. And it governs the elasticity of the matching function with respect to unemployment. Matching function with respect to unemployment. So formally, this eta is just d log mt divided by d log h minus lt. Okay, so that's how uh, the matching uh, works. And then from that, we can also figure out uh, the trading rates. So let's compute our matching rates here. Because the matching function you know, has constant returns to scale, it's called Douglas. All the matching rates will be determined by the, uh, by the market tightness. So labor or market tightness will denote it by um, theta t. So when we had the two market model, we had theta t market tightness on the labor market, x t market tightness on the product market. Um, here, because we are taking the angle uh, more of an employment angle, we say that um, the matching is really between households and um, um, butlers who are going to provide services for them. Uh, we have like more of a market uh, labor market vision of this economy. So the market tightness, I'll stick to the labor market notation and I'll call it theta t. And um, so market tightness is always a ratio between the two uh, argument into the matching function. So it's going to be the number of vacancies posted by households divided by the number of uh, butlers who are unemployed. And that's H, the size of the labor force minus LT, the number who are employed. That's our, that's our market tightness here. Um, and then that market tightness is going to determine all our matching uh, rates. So one is that you have the job finding rate. So we denote it by FT. So the job finding rate is the number of matches that are done by unit times divided by um, the number of um, butlers who are looking for work. So that's H minus LT. And given the expression from MT that we have here, uh, we can see that our matching, our job finding rate is just going to be uh, mu times theta t one minus eta. Uh, so as usual, the job finding rate is increasing in tightness. When you have a tight market, it's much easier to find a job. Then we have our recruiting rate. We denote it by QT. Um, the recruiting rate is telling us the rate at which uh, vacancies are filled. Uh, so it's the number of matches per unit time divided by the number of vacancies that are trying to be filled. 
uh, at time t. And so if we use again the expression for mt that we have over there, we divide it by vt, then uh, very easily what we get is uh, mu times theta t minus theta. So you can see because uh, uh, the vt uh, will show up here and will give us uh, vt divided by the h minus lt minus theta. So these are our two rates. And you can see the recruiting rate also as usual um, is decreasing in tightness. When you have a very tight market, it's harder to fill vacancies. You have a low recruiting rate. When you have a very slack market, it's easy to fill vacancies. Um, you have a high recruiting rate. Um, so these are, uh, this is our setup, matching function, matching rates, uh, and so on.